Hi, I'm Rosie and today I'm going to show you how to make my new quilted tote bag design following the release of my new PDF pattern. I've been using my bag non-stop since making it. It has a drawstring top section to keep all your belongings safe, is fully lined and has two different lengths of strap. A link to the pattern will be in the description bar below if you'd like to have a go at making your own. So as this is a digital pattern, you will have to print it out at home and you will need access to an A4 printer. And when you go into your print settings, you need to make sure your printer is set to 100% scale and not double-sided. It's a good idea to print one page to start with and check that the scale is right and then go ahead and print the rest out. And then it's up to you whether you print out the instruction booklet, you can follow it along on your computer or your phone. Um, but I prefer to print it out and have it next to me when I'm sewing. So there we go, now we've got the instruction booklet and the pattern. And now it's time to construct the pattern. This time the pattern has six rows going across. So start by finding your first six pages and then using a guillotine or just folding the edge, take one edge away from each inside side, as you can see just so that the registration marks line up. So just keep trimming the sides and laying them out. Onto the next row, this time you'll have to trim the top and the sides. Then once you've trimmed all the edges you need to, I go in with a Pritt stick and just add a few tiny dots of glue and check that the registration marks are all lining up. When you're matching up the registration marks, sometimes it's a little easier to look at the pattern and see where the lines should be and if you're going a bit off course, then to just sort of make sure you can see that the pattern is in line with each other. Then once it's all stuck together, I go in with some clear tape and just reinforce the seams. And then just go ahead and cut around the black line of all of your pieces. And there we go, you should have five paper pattern pieces in total. Now we're ready to cut out the fabric. First we're going to cut out two pattern piece A in your chosen outer fabric and wadding. And we're going to cut them at least two centimetres larger than the paper pattern. This just allows for any shrinkage when we quilt them later. For my outer fabric I've chosen this gorgeous blush pink linen. Make sure you get all the creases out of your outer fabric before you start quilting. If you are using fusible wadding, iron this to the back of your fabric before sewing. If not, tack the outer and wadding using a large tacking stitch or safety pins. Then it's time to quilt your fabric. I like to use vertical lines with a distance of 3cm in between. I have a fancy foot that helps me stay in line. I will try and link that down below for you guys. But you can do any stitch design you like. I just prefer to do the vertical lines, but you could do crisscrosses or you could even hand stitch it. Once your outer fabric is quilted, place your pattern piece A on top and cut around it. Make sure the grain and the quilting you've done is facing the right direction. There is a center notch at the top of the pattern piece and two other notches which need to be marked on your fabric in pencil or cut a little tiny slit in of about 0.3 centimeters. The center notch will help when aligning your lining and drawstring panel and the notches either side are for the strap placement. If you have a label you'd like to attach or a bit of embroidery, now is the time to do it. Once you finish quilting those pieces, put them right sides together and we're gonna sew along the side and bottom seam with a one centimeter seam allowance. Now it's time to create that bag shape by folding out the bottom corners and stitching these across. So for this you want to line up the two seams that you just created in the centre and you should end up with the main body shape of the bag. And it should look something like this where it creates a real boxy shape. So once you've sewn those bottom corners up, you can put that bit aside for now and we're going to work on the drawstring top section. For this you need to cut out two of your outer fabric pieces from pattern piece B 
and make sure to add the side notches and the bottom center notch. Then using a pattern master or a ruler, mark two centimeters in at the edges. This is where you're going to stitch. So you're gonna stitch two centimeters in, starting from underneath the side notch. Then once that's stitched, pop it on your ironing board and press that seam open. Now we're gonna make the edges look nice and neat and we're gonna fold the raw edges underneath themselves and press them down. This time you can sew above the side notches because we're gonna to top stitch those seams flat either side of the seam. Then give that a good press before we move on to the next stage. So now we're gonna create the channel seam and so to do that we're gonna start by folding one centimeter down along the top of the pattern piece. I like to use a piece of plain white card just to get a really crisp line along the one centimeter. Then we're gonna fold and press again until it meets just below the side notch. Once that's pressed down, pin the channel seam into place and stitch all the way around the edge. So there's your finished drawstring top section ready to be attached later on. You can thread your cotton tape or your chosen drawstring pull at the end. For now we set it aside while we make the straps. The bag has two different lengths of straps. You will need to cut out two of the outer and two of the lining for pattern pieces D and E. So you should have eight pieces in total. If you've chosen an extremely lightweight lining, you may want to find a different fabric for your strap lining. It's basically acting as a little bit of an interfacing and is gonna add a bit of stiffness to the fabric. So I'm using a medium weight cotton calico. Whilst you've got your lining fabric out, you may as well cut out the rest of your lining pieces. So you'll need to cut one pocket and two of pattern piece A. And again, don't forget to add the center notch. So back onto the straps, we now have all eight pieces cut out. I'm gonna start by ironing the outer fabric face down and then add the lining on top. Give that a good press and then fold it in half and press that down. Now you're gonna open up the pattern piece again and using your pattern master or a ruler, mark three centimeters away from that folded line that you just created. Then press the fabric over this line. It should be a one centimeter fold on each side. And again, I'm using a piece of plain card to help me get a crisp edge when folding. Once you've pressed both long sides, fold the straps back in half and give a final press. We're gonna strengthen the straps by adding a few lengths of top stitching. Top stitch the straps starting with the open edge. I use a stitch length of four on my sewing machine. Repeat this on the edge of the other side and then sew two more parallel lines, one centimeter in from each edge. So you should end up with a strong reinforced strap with four parallel stitch lines. Then repeat all of those steps until you have two short straps and two long straps. Place the straps back on their original pattern pieces and with a pencil mark two centimeters in along the dotted edge. This will be used to line the straps up with the top of the bag. Take your quilted bag that you constructed earlier and then locate the notches either side of the center notch. The edge of the straps will sit next to these notches. The long strap will be placed on the outer side of the notch and the short strap on the inside. So find that two centimeter line that you just sketched onto your strap and line that up with the very top of the bag. Ensure your strap is not twisted and pin into place. Then using a shorter stitch length, stitch along the edge of the bag with a seam allowance of about 0.5 centimeters. This will hold the straps into place when we're assembling the rest of the bag. So now we're gonna make the bag lining and first we're gonna focus on the pocket. To create the pocket, first fold and press down the top by one centimeter. Then repeat this with a larger fold of 2.5 centimeters, stitching along the fold to create the top of the pocket. Now fold the raw edges in by one centimeter and press them down. I like to use my piece of card here again to get a crisp straight line. Next, we're gonna pin the pocket into place. Its placement is shown on pattern piece A. The center of the top of the pocket will sit six centimeters down from the center of the bag lining. When stitching the pocket into place, you'll need two parallel rows of stitching. 
Start along the edge and make sure to back stitch at the opening of the pocket. Then sew in around 1.2 centimeters from the edge of the pocket. This will add strength and cover the raw edges of the pocket. And once you've stitched it, give the pocket a good press to make sure it's all sitting nice and flat. Now to construct the main body of the lining, we're gonna put the two pattern pieces, good sides facing each other, and we're gonna stitch down the side seams and part of the bottom seam. At the bottom, you're going to want to leave a gap in the center of about 12 centimeters so that we can pull the bag through once we've stitched it all together. So there you can see I've stitched along the bottom but I've left this gap in the center. And now we're going to fold out the corners again and stitch these across. All the components to the bag should be finished now and it's time to piece them together. Start by placing the drawstring top over the quilted bag with the good sides of the fabric facing each other. The center notch of each should line up. You can pin this roughly into place before adding the lining. Now keep the lining as it would appear when looking into the bag with the pocket on the inside. Place the quilted bag and the drawstring top inside the bag lining. Now match the center notches of all three pieces and match up the side seams. With a one centimeter seam allowance, sew all the way around the top of the bag. You're then gonna to want to turn your bag through the hole in the lining to check it looks straight along the top. Sometimes your sewing can go a little off piece, so it's a good time to check that the top of the bag is all looking nice and straight. Then turn the bag back in on itself as it was when you were just stitching it and you're gonna to want to add some reinforcing stitching to the straps. Then turn it all back through again and stitch up that hole that you had in the lining. Close up this hole by top stitching along it. I then trim off any loose threads and take the bag over to the ironing board. Place the bag on the edge of the ironing board and press along the top seam with the drawstring top facing up. Once I've ironed all the way around, I then fold the drawstring top inside the bag and press the top seam flat. Then using a large stitch length to match your quilting, top stitch close to the edge of the top of your bag, making sure the lining and drawstring are sitting nice and flat inside the bag. Then stitch a parallel line to that two centimeters in from the edge. This will catch the ends of the straps and make your drawstring sit a little deeper into the bag. This again is where my sewing machine foot comes in really handy. Trim off any loose threads and give the bag a good press. The final thing left to do is to add your drawstring ties using a threading tool or you can attach a safety pin to the end and feed it through. So you want to feed it through one side of the opening and have it go all the way around and come out the same side. And then you'll do exactly the same but entering from the other side. Once you've threaded it through, you can just tie a knot at each end. Check your drawstring is working. You should be able to pull on the knots at each side and it should slide shut. Check for any loose threads and you're finished. Sit back and admire your lovely new quilted tote bag. I really hope you guys have found this video useful. The link to the pattern is in the description bar below. If you do have a go at making the bag, don't forget to tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see all of your creations. I hope you are all having a wonderful day and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.